Good morning. It's raining. Still raining. It hasn't stopped raining for the past week. We're in a very soggy Cheddleton. Yes. On the Calden Canal, about four miles away from Frogall. And that's hopefully, fingers crossed, where we're going today. <laughs> it's unlikely. There's a stretch of river between here and there that we have to go on, where the yeah. river and canal join together. And the river's been in flood for like a week. And it's still been raining this morning. It's going to rain this afternoon and tomorrow. So if we can't get down there today, we're not going to be able to get down there at all. We're going to have to turn around and go back because we're heading north, even though we're going south. Yeah. at the moment that's absolutely no logic <laughs> whatsoever is it uh, if we do get to frog all we're not going to get through the tunnel with the boat but i am determined to get through that tunnel if we get there if we get there maybe i'll be the first person to skinny dip frog oh, all tunnel. in this weather <laughs> uh, it's been all right here the pub's closed the railway's closed all because of the restrictions but we did get a supermarket delivery right to our door last we night. We did. So we've got drawers full of biscuits. Right, are we all set? I'm ready. I don't think we're gonna get very far. No. Let's see how it goes. Yeah. Today is Sniffles Day. <laughs> <laughs> Bogey check. Are we all right? <laughs> You'd be forgiven for asking. I can't even, my mouth started to freeze. It's very up. cold this morning. You'd be forgiven for wondering why they built canals through the like remote open countryside of North Staffordshire. But back in the 1800s, this would have been quite busy like 30, 40 boats a day bringing iron ore and coal and limestone and flint out from the hills and the quarries out here which they don't exist anymore it's just leisure boats now and because the canals are so quiet especially at this time of year the water is like crystal clear it isn't is it? crystal clear yes One of my hero pioneers of the canals, thumping me, slapping him, is James Brindley. He built the Trent and Mersey Canal. He also built the Coventry and the Oxford, which we've been on. We have. Uh, the Bridgewater, which we haven't been on yet. But loads of other stuff, tunnels and aqua, all sorts. But it was here when he was surveying for the Calden Canal, just round that corner there apparently, where there was a massive thunderstorm and he got soaked to the skin. And he went to a nearby inn, pubs I think we call them now, and, <laughs> and tried to get dry, but he just couldn't get dry. And he ended up getting pneumonia, so he went home to try and recover, and he developed diabetes as well. And he died on the 30th of September, or the 25th if you look at some of the monuments, or the 26th if you look at his grave, it's just it's weird. That week, some point that week. <laughs> But he is a hero for the canals and he's remembered in loads of places. If you remember back at Etruria, there's a statue at Etruria Services. There's also a statue of him uh, in Coventry. And there's loads of places. And, and you might not think it, it's like this Brindley place in Birmingham. In Birmingham, yeah. And there's loads of schools and colleges and art centres and wells and streets and all sorts. If you look around the country, it's remembered in hundreds of different ways. And I think that's brilliant.
All right. Sniffly, still sniffy. Uh, we're at Oak Meadow Ford Lock, which is where the Calden Canal drops down onto the River Churnit for about three quarters of a mile. And as you can see from the indicator board, uh, it's still well into the red. Uh, I saw a photo of where the green was, uh, and it's probably about eight to ten inches lower than where it is at the moment. So it's nearly a foot higher than the kind of maximum safe limit, which means we're not going on it. You can see the currents are really strong, uh, especially where the river joins onto the canal just after the lock. We're not going to risk it. We've waited like nearly two weeks and although the sun's going up a little bit there's more rain forecast this afternoon, tomorrow and the day after that so we're going to have to give it up and turn round and go back up but I want to go to Frog Hall. It's not happening. We've No we've come all this way, <laughs> all this way. There must be a way that we can get to Frog Hall. It's not happening. <laughs> If we can't get the boat to Frog Hall, we're going to take the train instead. I have come down to the Churnit Valley Railway at Cheddleton to meet events manager Jack, who's offered to show me around the engine sheds, climb aboard a couple of the locos, and then he's going to take me down to Frog Hall on one of their Class 33 locomotives. Oh, so excited. Before all that, though, I asked Jack to tell me a little bit more about the railway. This is Churnit Valley Railway. We're based in the Staff Morelands. We're currently located at Cheddleton, which is a midpoint of the railway. Here we go down to Froggle or we can go north up to Leapbrook and then on to Ipstones. Um, we run dining trains, steam trains, diesel trains which you may be able to hear in the background and we follow the River Churnit which we're named after. The railway was built in 1886, uh, joined at Utoxeter and at Macclesfield. The idea was that if you wanted to get around Stoke Station quickly you'd come down this railway. It was then preserved in 1992 when the Churnit Valley was made, at that point we started playing with steam trains. Nothing can beat the sound, smell and nostalgia of a steam locomotive. Here at the Churnit Valley Railway, they've got quite a few steam locos running regular services between Ipstones and Frog Hall. Part of the huge team of dedicated volunteers work tirelessly all year round tending to these locomotives, keeping them serviced and maintained even in the dirtiest conditions. Oh, I do like to see a man in dirty overalls though. Inside one of the old engine sheds, this old London, Midland and Scottish locomotive was saved from the scrapyard and it's currently getting a complete strip down and refurbishment. So this is the 8F, it was built by the London, Midland and Scotland Railway. This one's having all its work done in house, it's currently got its wheels out and cylinders off. So it normally has a small set of wheels at the front, followed by the cylinders and then four large sets of wheels. Um, this started work earlier this year, but due to Covid, uh, work was stopped on this and work commenced on maintaining the other S160s. Outside, a similar locomotive is getting some TLC and I managed to persuade Jack to let me on the footplate to check out the controls for this beast. This is where we drive from. You'll have your driver sat here. That's your regulator. That makes it go. That's like accelerator in your car. That's the brake. That is like a gear stick in your car that makes you go forward or backward, depending where you're going at the moment in time. Fire hole door, you open that and shovel your coal into there. Normally it's red hot, but at the moment it's quite cold on this uh, chilly morning. And then finally, that's your pressure gauge, your gauge glasses. So in there, where your water is in there, like your kettle at home, it's in my boiler. Back inside one of the other sheds and more volunteers are working hard restoring one of the carriages ready to go back into service next year. Believe it or not, this whole section has been rebuilt after the original frame just crumbled away over the years. The volunteers are really passionate about this railway and it shows in the workmanship they put into restoring these old carriages. The dedication and attention to detail is just mind-blowing. I could stay in these sheds all day, I'm having such a good time, but we've got to get to Frog Hall, so Jack's warmed up one of the Class 33 diesels and he's invited me to take a seat in the driver's cab to enjoy the view. It's about five miles to Frog Hall from here and the railway weaves through the Staffordshire countryside down the Churnet Valley alongside the river and the canal. 
Because they're so close together, it means we'll get to see most of the views that we would have done had we managed to get Silver Fox past the flooded river. First things first though, we've got to get the locomotive out of the sidings. And once we're safely on the main part of the line, Jack gets us on our way and we're heading southeast. First stop is Consul Station. Do you remember when we were kids and we were always told don't play near the railway lines? Well, I don't think these pheasants got that bit of advice, you know. There's thousands of them along the course of the line just outside Cheddleton. And they're either oblivious to the danger or they're just really good at playing chicken with a 75 ton locomotive. Looking at the flood water in the fields from the railway, I'm glad that we didn't risk taking the boat onto the river while it's in flood. This section that we're on is where the combined river and canal run parallel with the railway. And a few hundred yards further along, the canal bears left and it comes under the railway line, leaving the river to tumble down that weir, which today it's looking a bit rough, isn't it, with all that flood water? This is Consul Station, and I've been really looking forward to cruising by here on the boat. It literally passes underneath one of the platforms, which has been built over the canal on stilts. Luckily, our good friends Pat and Eileen from YouTube channel Our Narrowboat Quest, they came down here a few months ago, and this is their boat coming underneath that platform. Now you see the waiting shelter just above the boat, that's been here since the station was built back in 1902. You can see it from this old photo of the station which was taken decades ago, well before this platform was opened in 2005. I see the Foxy Fan Club are waiting for us. Right in the middle of all this lovely countryside, we suddenly emerge into what looks like a cleared demolition site. It used to be Thomas Bolton's Copper Works, and it was made famous for manufacturing the world's very first transatlantic telegraph cables. During the Second World War, it changed production to wiring components for Spitfire planes. The site stood here for 200 years or more before it was closed, and then later demolished back in 2011 and only one of the four original chimneys was left as a reminder of its history. We're back in Cheddleton, and before I go, I asked Jack if I could take a look inside that locomotive. Because all these years, I've really liked trains, and I've never seen inside a locomotive at its engine. It was lovely and warm in there. Despite it being cold and wet outside, it was lovely. Well, that's all my boxes ticked for today, so it's time to go and get Sean. Before I go, though, I asked Jack how he got involved with the Churnit Valley Railway. 
Well, I got involved back in 2013. I just finished high school. I needed something else to do. So I turned up here at Chelleton Station and asked about getting involved in the engine sheds, to which at that moment in time I was hooked. Two weeks later I was doing my first shift down here with my overalls on boots. I didn't know which end to hold a hammer and now I'm driving steam engines and driving diesel engines and I've even managed to get my mum, my dad, my sister, my nan all involved so it's a huge family affair for people like myself and if you want to get involved yourself I'm sure somewhere in the description uh, Colin will have hopefully put uh, links and Hiya. Facebook. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so we're always looking for volunteers. It's a huge, huge operation down here and we're always looking for people, young, old, middle-aged, you name it, we'll find a place for you. There's always a place for somebody down here at Chernobyl Valley. I have had the best day. Thanks to this guy, this is Jack. Uh, if you want to get involved as a volunteer or maybe donate some money or whatever, all the details are down in the video description. Have a look down there. You know what? I don't think I'm going to go get Sean. I mean, whatever, it's up to you. He can walk back, can't he? Yeah, he'll be fine. Yeah? Do you want to get that train warmed up again? Yeah, we'll go, we'll go now. was shamazing. Shamazing! I have had the best day. I mean, you haven't got to frog all, which is sad, but it just means we'll have to bring the boat back to get Sean and Silver Fox to frog all. Maybe next year when it's a bit warmer and it drier. To, it needs to be warmer. <laughs> uh, but cheers to Jack and everybody at Churnit Valley Railway for taking me down to frog all and back on the train. That was just like the best day <laughs> ever. Equaling going under Tower Bridge for me. You can see I'm beaming. I'm going to be beaming like this for a week. Her cheeks are hurting from smiling. <laughs> I like it so much. But it sets us up for a bit of a, a question. <coughs> Choking on the smoke now from the fire. Where next? Up north. We've done as much as the Calden as we can do. So we're going back towards Etruria and the junction with the Trent and Mersey. But I don't want to go south again. No. I've had enough of the south for a while. Uh, so we're going to go north, but we've actually been everywhere around there haven't we so we've done Hare Castle, we've done uh, the Macclesfield canal as it comes off after Hare Castle, we've done the Middle Witch so and there's still stoppages further north so we can't go further north so I don't know I feel a bit like homeless like <laughs> the littlest hobo <laughs> don't you mean the littlest no no hobo the dog hobo so you'll just have to see where we end up next week I've got a feeling it might be somewhere a bit special. <laughs> oh no, I'm giving it away already. Right, I'm going to stop before I let, uh, I'm going to say let loose then. <coughs> you could let rip. <laughs> I could. Uh, <laughs> if you've enjoyed the vlog, and I hope you have, we've had a whale of a time. I have anyway. Uh, and you're not already, please subscribe to the channel and give the video a like, give it a thumbs up for us. Uh, if you'd like notifications when we release new episodes, just hit the notifications bell and YouTube will take care of that for you. If you want to support the channel, uh, there's a link up above Sean's head, as long as you're not watching on a TV. That will take you to Patreon, where you can join up and get loads of perks and exclusive stuff from there. Or you can do it via YouTube and become a YouTube member. There's a link, a join button, on our home page. I am still beaming. My cheeks are hurting from smiling. I've got to put up with this now for another week. Oh, it's brilliant. Uh, if you want to get involved with the Churnut Valley Railway as a volunteer or donate to them, uh, there's a link in the video description. Thanks to Jack and everybody there. We will see you from somewhere quite weird. I don't want to say too much. I don't want to say too much. See you next week. Take care of yourselves. Bye-bye. Ta-da! If it was Cheddarton, it'd be like Cheddars, and it'd be like soggy biscuits, wouldn't it? Soggy cheese biscuits, lovely. Oh. And, and it's gonna weak. Uh, it's, it, uh, there were there were coal in mines, yeah, um, <laughs> and that's a word I saw online the other day that I don't know. What, I don't know what that means either. There would be about thirty boats a day bringing. Uh,
Cow out. <laughs> Cheddleton. I keep saying cheddar milk. Thinking of biscuits again. But we've got to go and do this again in a bit because there's a lot coming up. I don't know where I'm going with this. Ah. He's trying to, he's trying to, he's trying to, I don't know, messing with his gear stick, which was like, <laughs> I hadn't thought of that word. Uh, not doing well today, boys and girls. And you might not real, realise it. Uh, it's remembered in hundreds of different ways, and I think that's brilliant. Yay! Oh, <laughs> take my <me> glasses off. <laughs> okay, are you ready? Yep. Um, from there, I hate you. It's all right, we can do it again. It's all right, mate, go on. We have jobs for you, mate. None of you, none none of you ever working anyway. To also man our fantastic new station, my phone. Yeah. <laughs> like that. Shall like that. Can we, can we do that for like two meters? Yay! Details of. No details of how to get involved. See, I'm. Yeah! 